happy Sabbath. This is Aunt Jenny. I'm so glad you could join us for our Sabbath program. Let's start with singing some song. This is the day. This it's is the day. This is the day that the Lord has made, that the Lord has made. I will rejoice. I will rejoice and be glad in it, and be glad in it. This is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. This is the day, this is the day that the Lord has made. Now let's sing, I want to be like Jesus. I want to be like Jesus. I'll study and I'll pray each day. Again, I use the scriptures when the tempter comes my way. Again, I use the scriptures when the tempter comes my way. Before we pray, let's sing, I want dear Lord a heart like thine. I want, dear Lord, a heart that's pure and clean, a sunlit heart without a cloud between, a heart like thine, a heart divine, a heart that's white as snow on me. Dear Jesus, please come into our hearts today. Help us that as we study and learn that you will be our teacher. We love you in Jesus' name. Amen. Now let's sing our Beatitude song. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are they that mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are they which do hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall take mercy. Blessed are they which are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are they when men turn by you and persecute you and so say, O men are of evil against you falsely for my sake. Rejoice. our nature corner. I have a nature thing from this book, How Great Is Our God by Louis, Louis Giglio. Blind as a worm. Can our friends see? Can you see okay? Yeah. Maybe our friends want to scoot closer to see better. Blind as a worm. For we are God's masterpiece. He has created us anew in Christ Jesus, so we can do the good things He planned for us long ago. If you've ever stepped outside after a rain shower, you've probably seen a bunch of earthworms slithering along, hurrying to get back underground. Why is why the rush? Because earthworms breathe through their skin. 
If their skin dries out, they'll die. There is also danger of birds looking for a quick snack. And with no arms and no legs, getting around is hard work. Special bands and muscles push the earthworm forward. Tiny bristles on its body grip the soil, and a slippery mucus coating helps it slide through the dirt. The earthworm doesn't no, have okay. any eyes either. Can you sit down so our friends can see too? Can I, can I see there too? you go. Can I see too? The earthworm plays an important part in our world. By churning up the soil, it moves nutrients to the top and creates holes that let in air and water. If an earthworm can do all that, just imagine what God can do with arms and legs. Or just imagine what you can do with arms and legs and eyes that God gave you. You can use your eyes not only to see the wonders and goodness of his creation, but also able to see the people around you who are hurting or in need. Your arms can reach out to give a hug and to help someone who has fallen. And those legs God gave you are great for going to serve others and to tell them about God. Oh, here's a fun fact. Most earthworms can only, or, oh, please hold still so I can see. Most earthworms are only a few inches long, but the Australian Gippsland earthworm averages around three feet in length. <gasps> That's a big earthworm. They're so big, they can sometimes be hard gurgling as they burrow under the ground. That's a different word. They, they are gurgling as they go into the ground. <laughs> How fun. God has made such wonderful creatures. I'm so glad he made them so interesting. Let's see what's next. We have a story. This is a story in Uncle Arthur's Bedtime Stories by Arthur Maxwell. It is called, A Child Shall Lead Them. You may think this is a made-up story, but it isn't. It's absolutely true. I know the little boy and girl it concerns very well indeed, and it was their mother who told it to me. Of course, the names are not real. I couldn't tell you the real names, could I? So I will call the boy Donald and the girl Margaret. Margaret was five and Donald was eight and a half. Any five-year-olds watching? Any eight-year-olds? Well, I guess you might be able to relate to these boys and girls in this story. It happened that one day when Mother was cleaning up the dining room, she threw an old Christmas card on the fire. It was a very old one that had been sent to Margaret at least four years before. Hardly was it a lit, however, when Margaret began to make a fuss. That's my Christmas card! She cried. You shouldn't have burned it. I kept it all this time. I want it. But it was such a dirty card, said Mother, trying to make the matter right. And it's been lying around the place for such a long time. I thought you didn't want it anymore. But of course I wanted it, cried Margaret, getting more angry. You should have known I wanted it. Why should you burn my things anyway? Was that a nice way to talk to her mommy? Mm -hmm. No. Mother tried calmly to explain to Margaret that she had lots of other cards and that all together there was no real value and that very soon there would be another Christmas that her friends probably would send her many cards. But Margaret refused to be reasoned with and began calling her mother some very unkind names. Uh-oh. Whereupon Mother tried another method of helping her little girl. 
and the neighbors must have wondered what was happening next door. Just what happened, I'll leave you to guess. But I can tell you that very shortly afterward, a sobbing little girl was getting in between a pair of sheets upstairs, going to bed. Donald was in bed by now also, and when Mother had kissed them both good night and gone up out of the room, he began to talk to his little sister. Mother on the stairs stopped to listen. Margaret, said Donald, you must be a good girl and go to sleep. I can't go to sleep, said Margaret. I've been so bad and I don't want Mother to spank me any more. Yes, dear, said Donald, with sympathy and wisdom beyond his years. You've been very bad, and it made me feel so sad and ill inside. But if you, if you would just say a little prayer, all for yourself, it would make everything all right. But I don't know what to say, said Margaret, amid the tears and sobs that shook her little body. If you like, Margaret. I'll help you, said Donald, and you could say it after me, shall I? Yes, please. There was a pause, then Donald began. Dear Lord Jesus, now Margaret began. Now Margaret, say it after me. Dear Lord Jesus, repeated Margaret. Help me not to be bad, said Donald. Help me not to be bad, repeated Margaret. Forgive me for showing so much temper tonight. The sobs increased, and for a while, Margaret did not speak. At last, she repeated, Forgive me for showing so much temper tonight. And make me a good little girl, continued Donald. And make me a good little girl, repeated Margaret, and wash away my sins. For Jesus' sake, amen said Donald. Margaret again repeated after him. That's, is that all now, Donald? She asked. Yes, dear, said Donald. Don't cry any more. You know, the sheets you've spoiled on, the sheet you spoiled on your book in heaven where the angels write down all that you do has now been smudged all over with something like red. Ever so red crayon. And it has hidden all the writing about your naughty tricks. And no one can ever read about them again. That's just what Jesus has done. When you say you're sorry and ask him to forgive us, aren't you happy, Margaret? Oh, yes, Donald. I feel better now. And Mother won't spank me anymore? No. Margaret, of course not. You've asked Jesus to make you good. And if you're good, Mommy and Daddy are happy, and then they never have to spank us, do they? No, said Margaret. Good night, said Donald. Good night, Donald, said Margaret. I'm so glad it's all right now. Then silence, while Mother crept softly downstairs with tears in her eyes and gladness in her heart, happy to know that her darlings had already found a friend in Jesus and were learning so soon to roll their burdens upon the Lord. As we do that, boys and girls, we can be pure in heart. To be pure in heart means that we, we're trying to be like Jesus and we're asking him to take care of the mistakes we make. Now there's a special story about an angel that Grandma Rose is going to share with us. Okay, you want to sit down in your chair so Grandma can come and share. Do you like angel stories? Yeah. Jesus has told us that they're invisible, but there's angels watching over us since the day we were born. And when we're working for Jesus in helping others learn the truth from the Bible, there's armies of angels that can help us. And if we are in danger of saying the wrong thing, our guardian angel will pick our words 
and urge us not to do something that would hinder the work and urge us the right words that will convict hearts. Today my story is about a little boy that got lost in the airport. It happened to be his first missionary trip into Russia. And as he was going in the airplane, we got off in Germany to change flights to another airplane. When we used the restrooms, he used the men's restroom and I used the women's restroom. He was more than seven years old. So it was a scary time when I came out and could not find him anywhere. I looked and looked and there were thousands of people going in all directions. Where was my son? We had all our equipment at a certain gate where our plane was supposed to leave, but they kept moving that gate. We kept having to go to a different spot because some important person was on that flight and they didn't want danger and harm to come to them. So they kept announcing a different gate, a different gate. How in the world could this son ever find us? Even if he remembered where we had put our things, our things kept moving. Oh, I was so concerned. I stayed near the restrooms hoping he would go back to that place, but still I could not see him anywhere. Then I said to the Lord, you gave this son of mine a guardian angel. Now it would be nothing for you to have that guardian angel take him by the hand and bring him now to me because they were announcing it was time to get on our flight and my legs were trembling. What was I going to do? I could not buy another ticket. I could not leave him behind. What was this mother going to do? Oh, I was so worried. And all of a sudden I saw him and he had his hand up walking calmly along as though he was hanging on to the hand of someone, but that someone I could not see. He was invisible. And he calmly came through security directly through an area that I could not pass myself. And the, and the announcements were going overhead in another language. I told them that I had a lost boy but they did not speak it out in English. And there he was. I was so excited. His hand was up. He's walking towards me. And he didn't really focus on me until he got close. And then, oh, I was so thankful. As he came to me, I brought him into my lap and I was shaking. The other passengers watching the whole drama asked, are we going to have to pick you up and carry you onto the airplane with your son? What can we do to help you get on there? Your seat row has been called and you're not on the plane. Come on. Just in time, the angel had done what I prayed for. You have a guardian angel as well, though you cannot see him. Someday, as the promise says, blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Someday, when we get to see God, we also get to see our angels and talk to them about what really happened. What dangers were we in that they protected us from? And what did we look at what we thought was something that was actually an angel? Thank you, and just remember, the angel of the Lord camps around about them that fear him, and he delivereth them, Psalm 34, 7.
You don't have to be afraid. You can trust. Don't be afraid of the dark because you have a big, strong angel who can handle many thousands of people. Very big muscles and strong enough because the power of God is with them. Thank you for listening to this week's angel story. Let's see what's next. Now it's time for our Ellen White story. Remember last week we learned about how Mrs. White's name was changed from Ellen Harmon to Ellen White. Well, this week, a few months after uh, Ellen was married, she was in a meeting and she was telling people about what God had showed her. And in the meeting was Captain Bates and he had told people over and over, I'm just a doubting Thomas. You know, Ellen Harmon, Ellen White's experience is very wonderful, but I guess I'm just a doubting Thomas. Well, as she was talking to the people, all of a sudden she started saying the word glory and she started really think glory 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 and she started having vision and in her vision she saw stars and planets do you like to see the stars oh they're so pretty at night but she got to see them really up close like you would with the Hubble telescope and as she's in vision she's talking about what she sees a, a planet with a beautiful sphere with rings around it and you guessed it, Saturn. And she saw the different planets. And as she's describing them, Joseph Bates is listening. And he says, I've never heard anyone talk about astronomy like this woman. He, he couldn't contain himself anymore. He stood up and he said, this is the best description of astronomy I have ever seen. And then he caught himself, but I'm the doubting, doubting Thomas. He realized that it was only God that could give her such an amazing view of the planets. God was showing Ellen and, and he said, God gave her this vision for me so that I would no more be a doubting Thomas anymore. After that, he was a big supporter of Ellen and James White as they did their missionary work. Wasn't that wonderful that God gave a vision so that the doubters would not doubt anymore. Well, there was a day that Ellen was invited to go to another place not far from where she was in Maine talking and Joseph Bates was listening. There was a there was a horse that was um going well yeah they they were supposed to return a horse that James White had been training I want to see on this okay and as they were traveling the people said this horse is so it's it's a scary horse it's a it's one that people have had a hard time training he doesn't do well with people if you touch him and on his back, he'll kick you. And he's he's just not a very good horse. Well, James White felt he could handle him because he had done some training of horses before. So he decided to go take the horse back and they were gonna travel it. There were people that restrained the horse, several people holding the horse. Well, they got the cart all attached to the horse and they got all ready to go. Well, first James got inside. James White got inside and he held the ropes tight for the horse. And then Ellen White got inside next to him. And then Captain Bates and another man decided they were going to go too. And they jumped in the back. And as they were going, they were enjoying 
the nature. It was so beautiful. And all the time, James White had to hold on to the ropes really strong so that this horse would not go away. He was... He had to be held in rain really tight. And as they were going, all of a sudden, Ellen said those three very familiar words, glory, glory, glory. And she was in vision. And you know what she did while she was in vision? She put her hand on that horse's back and everyone was so worried. She starts stepping down, and James, or, um, she put her hand on the back of the, of the horse as she was stepping down, and it, and Joseph Bates cried out, he said, oh no, that horse is going to kick her, but that horse, he stood up straight and tall, and he wouldn't move a muscle. The whole time, she was in vision. That horse didn't do anything. James White tried to see if, if he could make it move even a muscle. So he, he took the whip and he touched it, and it wouldn't move at all. He tried again harder. It wouldn't move at all. Well, you know, in the past, the problem with this horse was that someone had been really mean to the horse and beat the horse. And so the horse was very afraid of people. But God had sent his angel and had, had made the horse feel so calm. And during the whole time of the vision, the horse did not trouble Ellen. And then she climbed back into the wagon. And the vision was over. And the horse, without even being touched, was back at it, going really fast and acted all agitated again. God had tamed the horse so that during the vision, he was so docile like a tame old horse. God has the power to do anything. The angel of the Lord encamps around those who fear him and delivers them. The angel was there to keep Ellen quite safe. And he can take care of us too. Mommy. Okay, now we have our Bible story. Our Bible story. A special Bible story. Let me move these things here. Okay. Okay, can you can you sit in your chair so that I can come and share the Bible story? I can't see it that way. Okay. I wanna sound this. Well if you sit down then we can do the story. Okay. Can our friends see the picture? Can you see it okay, friends? Is it too bright? Is that better? Okay. Our story... Oh, before we start, are you ready to study the Bible? Yes! Let's pray. Dear Jesus, please be with us as we study the Bible. Please come into our hearts and help us that we'll be able to listen well. In Jesus' name, amen. Our story starts out when Jesus was born. An angel, if you remember, appeared to Mary and told her that she was favored. Okay. And that she was to have a child, a baby boy, and she was to name him Jesus because he would save the people from their sins. What a wonderful thing that was. She was highly favored. She had a pure heart and she was going to see God. She was going to be God's mother. How wonderful is that? 
The angel was so kind as he talked to her. She prayed that God would help her to be a good mother to baby Jesus. Well, her fiancé, Joseph, didn't understand at first, but the angel appeared to Joseph in a dream and told him that, Don't be afraid. This is God's plan, and God is going to help them. God, the angel had told Mary that the cousin Elizabeth had also been given a child, and her child would prepare the way for Jesus. So they had a happy time together sharing about the joy of the coming Messiah, Jesus. They were going to get to see God. Now it happened that the, the ruler wanted everyone to pay taxes, but they couldn't just stay home and pay the tax. They had to go all the way to their ancestral place where their families had come from, and they had to pay money there. So they had to go to Nat to Bethlehem, because that's where Joseph was from. They had to go a long ways. We don't know if they had a donkey, but they had to go all the way to Bethlehem. And when they got there, there were so many other people who were trying to pay their taxes. There was no room in the inn, in the hotels. There was no room for them. So the only place they could find was a stable. And Jesus was born in a stable. And Mary and Joseph, they were pure in heart. They were trying to do what God wanted them to do. Every step, keep his commandments. And they got to see God. Now, when Jesus was still a baby, they took him to the tabernacle to dedicate him to God. And there, they brought him before the priest. It was on day 40 after he was born. They took him to the priest and gave him, dedicated him to God. As they were leaving, someone said, Oh, praise the Lord! This is the Messiah! He's come at last! Do you know who it was? His name was Simeon. Simeon had been told by God that he would get to see the Messiah before he died. And he was waiting in the tabernacle looking at every little baby coming in to be dedicated. And God said, that's my boy. That's him. And he got to hold him and he blessed him. He was pure in heart. And he got to see God. How was he pure in heart? How did he become pure in heart? By trying to follow God, by reading and praying, and studying your Bible, you can be pure in heart too. And when you do naughty things, you ask Jesus to forgive you. And oh, there was another surprise. As Simeon was done, an older lady came. And she was so excited. She says, oh, look, there's the Messiah. And she was so happy. This lady, Anna, had been in the temple for so long. She had been a widow for so long. And she was serving God day and night. And she was praying, praying that she would get to see the Messiah. And God told her that Jesus was there and she got to see God. She was so happy. And this brought courage to Joseph and Mary as they heard their testimony. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. We can be pure in heart too. You know, Jesus is coming soon. He's going to come very soon. He's going to come in the clouds with angels around him. And there'll be a rainbow around his head and there'll be fire at his feet. And he's going to come for those who love him. And if you love Jesus, you get to go to heaven. Here are they that keep the commandments and the faith of Jesus. Here are they that keep the commandments and the faith of Jesus. So as you love God and you keep
keep his commandments and you read and pray, Jesus will help you be ready when he comes so that you can see him and be ready to go to heaven. Do you want to go to heaven? Yeah. I do too. Let's pray. Let's pray that Jesus will come into our hearts. Dear Jesus, please help us that we will be ready when you come. We want to be pure in heart. Please take away all those awful sins that make us not be pure. And may we shine for you. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's sing our Beatitudes one more time. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are they that mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are they which do hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. Blessed are the merciful. For they shall obtain mercy. Blessed are the poor in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the children of God. Blessed are they which are persecuted for righteousness' sake. For theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are ye when men shall revile you and persecute you and shall say all manner of people against you falsely for my sake. Don't do that. Be and be exceeding glad, for great is your reward. so glad you joined us for us, our program today. I hope that you will come again. And may God help us all to have a pure heart. We'll see you next time. Goodbye.